Welcome back again to my YouTube video channel edition. I'm going to go ahead and share the slide so we can get started. Today, uh, my presentation is about why do people need a, a deep cleaning? Let me just go ahead and just go back to the slide so we can get started. Thank you for joining us today. Presentation today is about uh, why somebody need a, a deep cleaning. What is the deep cleaning and all of that. So in dentistry, uh, a general term for the insurance purpose is scaling and root planning. Or the literature term is scaling and root planning. That it basically when the dentist talk to you, they he or she or the hygienist would say you need a deep cleaning. So the deep cleaning is this an example where a patient need a deep cleaning. You can see how much uh, tartar and plaque patient build up. All right. So what the reason why we need the deep cleaning? Um, the deep cleaning. This is before and after. Some picture right after the deep cleaning, the gum bleeding like that, and why? What happened? I want to explain to you a little bit about um, what we're talking right now is. Uh, the process of people who have the problem with their gum. You're looking at the uh, fourth state of the gum, healthy gum, gingivitis, type one and type three kind of gum problem. So the progressive of the gum is you either have a healthy gum, there is no in, uh, bleeding gum, no uh, plaque buildup, everything looks good, that's called healthy gum. When you have uh, gingivitis is basically when you have uh, reddish gum and uh, plaque bit up, but you don't have any bone problem. The bone is still solid. So that's called a gingivitis. When you get to a state where early gum disease is when you have some bone loss and then you have uh, plaque bit up, you have uh, commonly a seen with the teeth is, is not straight and crowded or patient don't have a hygiene problem. Um, so um, this is a case where a patient has bone loss and uh, heavy calculus. This picture shows this is more like type uh, advanced gum disease right here. Uh, so anyway, uh, I want to go right back to the uh, con conversation here. Scale and root planning and also known as deep cleaning uh, is a, basically a conventional periodontal therapy, basically the conventional gum treatment, or, or it's, we can also call it a non-surgical gum surgery. <clears throat> what does it involve? It involves the removal of dental plaque, dental calculus, like um, involves scaling and deprive the teeth. We deprive in the teeth, uh, the, 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 the root surface, then smoothing and planning and, or, and expose the surface of the root removing the cementum or dentin that um, yeah. impregnate the calculus and toxin and microorganism. The, et uh, the uh, etiologist agent that causes inflammation, uh, which help to establish the periodontium that, uh, in remission of periodontal disease. Periodontal scalar and periodontal curate are some tool that we use to to do this non-surgical procedure. Um, I'm going to zoom, go back to my screen a little bit smaller so we can talk about this presentation. <clears throat> so uh, you see right now is uh, the, the plaque. What is the plaque basically? The plaque is a soft, soft yellowish, grayish substance that adheres to the tooth surface, you see? And it's in, in, uh, include a removal or uh, fixed restoration. It could be on your denture or it could be on your filling or it could be on your crown or brush. It's an organized biofilm. It's a pr that is primary composed of bacteria in a matrix of cycloprotein and extracellular polysaccharides, basically from like uh, carbohydrate substance, like rice, um, any type of uh, noodle and bread, those are the type of carbohydrates. It, uh, it, it built up on your teeth, it's called a plaque. 
It's the first, uh, and this may to make it impossible to remove uh, by rinsing or, or spraying. In general, the more effective uh, one's brushing or flossing or the oral, uh, oral care practice, the less plaque will accumulate on the teeth. So basically, if you brush more, you floss more, you have less plaque on your mouth. If after 24 hour oral uh, environment, the biofilm remain undisturbed by, by brushing and flossing, it begins to observe the mirror contain of saliva. So when it's after 24 hour, you don't brush, your plaque will absorb those calcium or phosphorus from saliva and it transform from salt, easily remove them into hard substance known as calculus. So that you can see that within 24 hour, it can turn into uh, hardening uh, calculus if we, don't, if we don't remove it. So the calculus is basically common called tartar. Calculus is a base of new layer of plaque biofilm that settle and build up over the time. Calculus cannot be removed with brushing and flossing. Just remember that the calculus cannot be removed by brushing and flossing. Uh, plaque accumulation tend to be thickness, thickest along the gum line. You can see that it's get thick on the gum line because of the interproximity uh, proximity of this area the, to the gum tissue, the bacteria, plaque begin to irritate and infect the gum. So because of the close to the gum, it's it causing uh, gum infection. Uh, infection of a gum uh, disease known as the gingivitis literally means inflammation of gingiva. When you have the beginning of the gum, it's called the uh, inflammation, but this in particular is no longer gingivitis, but it's more like gum disease by now. So this is a combination of gingivitis and, and also local gingivitis and also generalized gum disease. This, this picture, I, I don't want you guys to confuse it. This is no longer gingivitis issues, but more like the disease. But I'm just talking about a calculus definition. So, and so gingivitis is characterized by swollen, reddish, bleeding gum. Swollen, reddish, and bleeding gum. It is the first step in declining the gum health. The only step in which uh, fully reversible to restore the oral health. So when you have a gingivitis, it's reversible to treat it. So when you get to a state where we call gum disease, it's too late. So the gingival tissue swell, uh, swells, it's no longer provided a fatty seal between the teeth and the outside environment. So when it's swollen, there's a gap there. So the vertical space is created between the tooth gum, allow the new uh, bacteria plaque biofilm to begin to migrate into the socket in uh, and the space between the gum and the tube. And the, uh, at the gingivitis state uh, continue, the, the capillaries in with the socket begin to dilate, resulting in more bleeding when brushing and flossing. So the reason that you have more uh, bleeding is the, the those uh, blood vessel capillary is become uh, dilated. So it's basically, it, uh, it's a body attempt to clear the infection of your tissue uh, of an active gum disease, active oral infection. Your body sweeps out the, uh, the, 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 the toxin in your body. That's why your gum bleeding. Once the bacteria plaque have uh, infiltrate the pocket, the formation of biofilm into calculus will continue as the result of an ulcerating of lining of the tissue would begin to break down the attachment of the gum. So once the inflammation occur, um, then the, uh, the the bacteria infiltrate to the socket. There's gonna be the a continue of the destruction of the gum tissue. So this is a term periodontitis. It's the, basically a gum disease. Definition is officially when the bacteria begin to act and result in bone loss, okay? This bone loss mark Transitional gingivitis into true periodontal disease, basically true gum disease when you, you go from gingivitis to gum disease. That's where you have bone loss occur. It's the first evidence of periodontal disease damage is that the, you see on the 
apparent of the uh, x-ray you see is a bone loss occur okay uh, so more bone loss occur this is because of what because of the the activity of the sites osteoplasts and osteoplasts occur imbalance you have normally you have bone around the gum function uh, imbalance but when you have gum disease the the somehow the uh, um, the mediator of the chemical mediator in under the gum causing the the increased activity of osteoclast which is creating more bone destruction and that's where the bone losing it okay that's where you have more bone loss um, so the, this process is will proceed continue greater damage until the infection bacteria uh, agent like plaque and locally written calculus are removed. So in order to get rid of these uh, destruction, we have to remove the plaque and calculus. That's why the Prussian flossing is no longer efficient. You need the, the dentist. Um, so once the bacteria and calculus are removed from the pocket, the tissue begin to heal and the, the infection may decline and the swollen reduce and the seal of the root and tube is, is starting to form again. So this is before, this is after the cleaning, you can see the improvement. This is before and this is after the cleaning. Cleaning, You can see the gum tissue look a lot better. This is why you need a dentist to get involved when you have this severe gum problem now. Uh, so the next slide is uh, after the damage causing the periodontal disease, it never heal completely. Okay, so just remember that. When you have this destruction going on here, the there's no more possibility to reverse the situation. Let me stop here one second and I'll be right back with you guys.